Dear students, I am Dr. Shoham Samajpati. Let's discuss about accreditation. So, as per first, uh, you should be aware of the fact that as per the NMC Act, NMC Act of 2019, for FMGs, that is foreign medical graduates, passing the country's licentiate exam that is the country of completion of their qualification has been made mandatory passing the medical license of the country of qualification This is as per the NMC Act of 2019. So, what does it mean for the Indian students who are studying their undergrads in different universities of Russia? Most of the students have a misconception. They have a misconception that the GOS exam, the GOS exam gives license. This is wrong. The GOS exam doesn't provide you with the license to practice medicine in Russian Federation. The license exam for uh, Russian Federation is called Pervichna Accreditatia or accreditation. It's called Pervichnaya accreditatia now let's talk about the pervichna accreditatia what is this exam all about so this exam that is the accreditation this exam is not related to your university your university will never get involved in this exam. It is not associated by any means uh, with the University of Higher Education. This exam is conducted by Ministry of Health or as it called in Russian, Minstersva Zdravokranenie or the Minstrav Rasi. There is a specific body in the Minzdrav Rasi which is called the FACTS. FACTS stands for Federalni Accreditazioni Center or Federal Accreditation Center which is located in Moscow and this body organizes this exam all over Russia. In every university there is a center called the Accreditazioni Center. Or, or the accreditation center. This exam is generally conducted every year approx, approx around uh, 10, 10 to 15 days after GOS. GOS actually ensures you your qualification. This is an exam for defending your qualification. So after you get your qualification, you appear for accreditatia. And you have to apply for the exam of accreditatia beforehand, like around a month before GOS. Just like you used to make application for your NEET UG before passing the 12th. Same. So now this exam, in my personal opinion, level of this exam. In my personal opinion, the current level of this exam is at par with India's FMG exam. Questions from all the subjects are asked. 
that includes internal medicine that includes general surgery that includes infectious diseases that includes um, pathology that includes histology and also PSM so that is the standard of the exam and university can in no way help you out in this exam this is a pan Russia exam conducted by ministry under the supervision of ministry and that's the standard of the exam now how the exam looks like so let's talk about the structure of the exam accreditation is a three-step exam it is a three-step exam step one is based on MCQs fortunately only one answer correct that is a good thing step two is OSCE station to station OSCEs there will be five stations five stations in step two step three this is again MCQ but but based on based on zadacha or situational task now let's discuss it in a bit detail what is step one so in step one you will have mcqs from all the subjects which you have been taught in your medical school but one thing to remember and this is again my personal opinion the questions of accreditation is will not be something very close to what taught in the university at least it's my opinion the questions of accreditations are very modern and they are based on recommendations uh, by different um, organizations main organizations like the European Association of Therapists the Eurasian Association of Therapists, the Royal College of um, Surgeons, like this, WHO guidelines, Russian Health Ministry's guidelines, these, the questions are basically based on these things. So what is step one? In step one, there will be 80 MCQ questions, 80 MCQ questions, and the passing marks is 70%, that is 56 marks. The passing marks is 70 percent 56 marks and only only one option is correct now what is step two the step two is station based that is oski there will be five stations And in each station, and in each station, you have to score 70% and above to pass the step two. Each station, more than 70% to pass the uh, step two. Now, in the curriculum, there are about 80, uh, sorry, sorry, there are about eight variants. Among the eight variants, only five will come. And in stations, what you need to do, you need to perform. You need to perform as per the as per the question. When you go in front of the station, either the question will be on the door of the station or someone will give you the question. So you have to perform as per the question. Uh, given in the station and while performing you have to you have to explain what you are doing explain what you are doing in Russian one thing which I just missed the whole exam is conducted in the national language that is in Russian you cannot give this exam in any other language this is conducted by ministry and it's solely in Russian. So you have to keep on explaining uh, in Russian what you are doing. 
and explaining as per what as per as per ministry issued guidelines for each statement you make for each statement you make while explaining carries marks they carry marks and if somehow this is a very important step of the exam if somehow you miss almost around 6 to 7 points from the ministry guideline sorry to say your step 2 is done you won't be able to pass it so you have to be very careful and very precise about the step 2 of, of the exam then comes the step 3 now step 3 of the exam as i said it is again mcqs based on situational tasks total of two tasks will come two tasks and there will be uh 24 marks that is 12 plus 12 24 marks in the uh, total marks in the exam and again to pass you have to score more than 70% that is 17 marks it doesn't matter how you score it uh, it may be like you score maybe uh, less marks in first task and more marks in second task but all together it should be 17 marks for passing the most important aspect of step 3 is that it kind of carries a negative marking which makes this step very hard and difficult now how this negative marking works it doesn't work like uh, we know in indian exams as of uh neat pg or our new neat ug or ini uh, ini ct doesn't have negative marking so it doesn't work like that how it works you will be given a question now uh you will be given a question that is task you will be given a task after that there will be first question and you want to be able to see the next questions and in uh, in the first question there will be four options and here multiple options are correct multiple options are correct so there will be four options or there might be five options as well sometimes so you make the perfect choices and you submit the first answer when you submit the first answer second question will appear and you again go for the answer you give the answer then third question will appear now the tricky point is if you make a mistake in the questions like in the answers of first question or second question you will automatically be, you will be automatically derailed of the right diagnosis of the right answers and that's how you lose marks in the third step so at the end there will be total 12 questions you score 17 or more marks to pass these steps so this was all about what the exam accreditation accreditation or pervichna accreditatia is now after you finish the exam what about license now you have passed the exam what about license the license after you finish the exam the accreditation center where you have appeared for they will issue a protocol book a protocol it takes around maximum maximum around 
48 hours. After they issue the protocol book, there is a Zavlenia. There is a Zavlenia or application form which you can acquire from the particular accreditation center or even it's available in the ministry website. And this is particularly for foreigners. Uh, Russians, they, Russian citizens, they get their license automatically in the Gos Uslugi. But unfortunately for foreigners, the Gos Uslugi is not functioning uh, with all its functions. So for foreigners, you have to write a Zavlenie or application to FATS, to FATS, and there is an email ID, which at uh, the time of exam, I'll definitely uh, say you. So don't worry about it. So you send an email to FATS with your signature and everything, all the application made. And FATS should give you your uh, license uh, maximum around in about three days. And this is called, this license is called Vipiska, Vipiska or Vipiska of what? Of Accreditatsi, Accreditatsi. After you get all this in the license, in the Vipiska, you will see a unique number written after your name. That is your license number. And what about the license? You sh if you are knowing a thing, you should know everything. What about the license? With this license, you can work anywhere, anywhere in the territory of Russian Federation as a doctor or a clinician. And there is another function as well. If some of you, anyone from you wants to proceed with Ardinatura or post graduation or residency training, the marks you have secured in Accreditatia, marks of accreditation, this will act as your entrance marks entrance marks there are uh, many foreign residents like doctors uh, who did not uh, sit for accreditation and are doing residence in russia but the problem is that is called they give another exam which is called the stupi tel nie is but the problem is with Stupitelni Ispitaniye, you don't have a license to practice and you cannot work as a doctor or a physician in the territory of Russian Federation with this. And you can never in your capacity issue a prescription or something. And if you issue it, that will be completely illegal and you may end up into legal troubles. So. That, that is all about accreditation and I have already said you about the NMC, new NMC guidelines and frankly speaking as a practicing doctor, as a physician, I do feel that this decision of India government, of our Ministry of Health is a positive and a good decision because what I think is a clinician should be competent in all forms you will be you you know what is lying on your hand in your hand lies the uh, life of another man so you should give exams you should give exams not for not for just sake of um, some license as like philosophically saying you should not be giving an exam for some purpose maybe license or salary or something but you should always have this thing philosophically in your mind that you should put yourself into testing for knowing your competence. And after you crack it, that thing, that thing gives a big boost to your confidence. And you start really working uh, as a confident clinician. Thank you, dear students.